Most people think that shipwrecks are only found way offshore or in the deep depths of the ocean, but Seattle has them hiding right in the middle of the city. Between the Washington State ferries, fishing boats, cargo ships, and recreational craft, Seattle's waters have been well utilized over the years. But with this constant traffic, changing weather patterns, human error, and time itself, not every vessel makes it home. Some get abandoned. Some are sunk on purpose rather than being disposed of properly. And others can be lost unexpectedly due to fire or other disasters. But slowly and quietly, vessels disappear beneath the surface resting on the sea floor where they lie hidden from the public eye. The centrally located Lake Union is no stranger to sunken vessels. In fact, around 2017, a high resolution survey identified nearly 100 different targets in the lake, including barges, work boats, sailboats, canoes, landing craft, and even ladders. This video explores three targets sitting right off the coast of the popular Gasworks Park using a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, that maneuvers underwater like a drone. I'm diving this Blue Robotics Blue ROV2 Heavy model, equipped with a Cerulean Sonar 450kHz side-scan sonar unit, a GoPro for 4K video, a live pilot camera, four underwater dive lights, and a gripper in case I get entangled or want to pick something up. Rather than flying around blindly in this murky, low-visibility water, I'm using the side scan sonar to emit sound that will reflect off the shipwrecks. And from that, we can then paint a picture of the nearby area for navigation. The first wreck we're going after is Irene, which should be sitting right off the shore. Records describe her as a 40 some foot wooden vessel, about 11 to 12 feet wide. The lake is 45 degrees right now, and the cold fresh water should help preserve wrecks. On the contrary, local boat traffic may stir up the lake bed and accelerate their decline. In theory, we could also search for these wrecks on scuba. However, that would be illegal as Seattle City Code requires a permit to dive in Lake Union. With the ROV in the water, the plan was to drive out a few meters, drop down, and search with the side scan. Luck was on our side as right away a hole entered our field of view as we hit four meters deep. The tour starts on the port side of the ship, looking towards the stern. In these shallow waters, the lake fronds, which might be milfoil, have plenty of light to survive. I'll jump in and out with commentary on what I think we're looking at. We're heading towards the stern right now, but know that your guess is as good as mine. If you disagree or see anything I miss, please do let me know in the comments. This upright piece looks like the starboard wall of a main cabin. That material looks like rusting metal. As we reverse towards the ship's bow, this large rectangular piece may have been the roof of that main cabin. Here we reach the deepest part of the wreck at seven meters. Sliding over, this looks like Irene's bow. The opening on top could have been a compartment to store anchor chain, with the anchor hanging over the two protruding features off the bow. Heading down port side, back towards the stern, we wrap up our tour. I flipped on the side scan and slowly rotated the ROV to get a nice sweep of the wreck. Comparing this with the historical survey, we see a clear match. The cyan arrows highlight the same internal collapsed cavity, with the red arrows pointing out the strong return from the bow. Additionally, in the surrounding environment, we see a linear feature in blue, likely a log or pipe, as well as the yellow arrow pier pilings. The Lake Union Virtual Museum archives also had a photo that matched our anchor chain compartment. 
I didn't find the Irene lettering, as it's very likely to be covered by biofouling or is hidden at the stern among the weeds. We wrapped up the dive, surfaced the ROV to get our bearings, then started scoping out the second target, the FOSS 54 barge. The barge is massive, nearly 100 feet long and 30 feet wide, and it should definitely pop up on the side scan. Starting with a known reference, Irene, we did a sweep. And wow, yeah, there she is, not far at all and certainly larger than life. We flew on over, dropped down, hung a left, and there she is. The barge looks to be made of long wood planks with metal reinforcing the corners and key parts of the outer frame. Let's call this corner number one so we have a landmark. We're moving along one of the short sides right now. This is corner number two. Each corner has a post like this, likely used to organize cargo or for tying up to docks. Making our way down a long edge, we see the wood decaying. We weren't able to see inside any of these openings, but it is cool to see the rusting bolts and hardware still fighting to keep FOSS together. Alongside FOSS are some tires, logs, and other debris. This looks like another tire spray painted yellow stuck in the weeds. Corner number three was right next to an old piling. This side of the barge seems to be propped up about a foot off the lake bed, which allowed us to drop in low and take a look. Not really sure what this cylindrical object is. It does look to be holding up the wreck to some degree, so I imagine it would have to be driven far into the lake bed. It might be made of wood or maybe concrete. It's pretty hard to tell. We got a little distracted because we saw a frying pan just sitting there. And then what might be a lunch tray. Then a nicely cut log that definitely belongs around a campfire. A red Solo cup. Cheers. And a pair of tires. Typical. This led us to a debris field on Foss's other long edge. It consisted of mostly wooden planks from the barge with a few cans and a couple tires. Eventually, we close the loop at corner number four. This opening in the deck appears intentional, maybe for maintenance or extra storage. However, this opening looks more like a collapse from decayed wood. All in all, the FOSS barge is in really good shape. It reminds me of a smaller barge located on Washington's Olympic Peninsula. This barge also sits in cold, fresh water, which has likely led to its preservation, similar to the FOSS. Checking against the previous survey, this is a solid one-to-one -one match due to the size and shape of the barge, as well as the presence of the debris field off to the right side. The Lake Union Virtual Museum notes FOSS was built in 1908 and was being actively used until 1969. It's not clear when she sank though. If you have any information on this wreck or others, please leave a comment. We surfaced for a quick GoPro and ROV battery swap and to prep for the third and final wreck. It doesn't have a name but is labeled as a converted landing craft. I honestly don't know what that means, but we'll certainly find out. 
that lies just beyond the Irene and will be in deeper water. With the Foss barge to the left and Irene over on the right, we know the landing craft should be somewhere beyond Irene. To find her, we'll start by increasing the range on the side scan sonar. After relocating Irene, we bumped the range up to 65 meters. Resolution degrades at these longer distances, but it might be good enough to make out a large target. Something is reflecting sound at the 50 meter mark past Irene, though it's not conclusive. We did a second sweep to include the barge as an additional bearing. After aligning the maps, it looks like our mystery target is in the right spot and certainly worth exploring. To find the wreck, we'll do the tried and true sweep and seek. After identifying a target with a sonar sweep, we'll fly forward to seek it out. Every so often, we stop and do another sweep. Here you can see we've moved about five meters closer to the wrecks. We keep repeating this process to slowly close in on the target. Notice how the resolution has improved at close range, and now this definitely looks like a ship. The clip is at 4x speed and shows the live pilot view. As we creep through the marine snow, slowly but surely, a large object appears in front of us. We're at the stern, 11 meters deep, making our way along the port hull. Check out these huge gashes where the walls seem to have rusted out. Here's a boat cleat and a cable. There's a pretty large drum, wonder what was stored inside there. Likely not even a part of this wreck though, may have just fallen in the lake and then rolled until it hit the wreck. Here's even more deck equipment and cables. The port hull ends abruptly at this structure, which has a very distinct notched kind of upper corner on the top of it. There's plenty of room to explore the fore end of the boat as everything is either collapsed inwards or perhaps this was by design. A large wooden beam is extending out in front of the boat, which is kind of odd. Perhaps it fell and used to be upright. We're on starboard now, and I nearly ran into a different wooden boom. This one has what might be a pulley mechanism on the end of it. The heart of the boat is in disarray with equipment and structural pieces strewn about. Heading towards the stern, we see a distinct separation between the two cavities, and the second one seems to be more so by design than the first one. This rusty, heavy-duty tow post seems fit for hauling cargo, other boats, or maybe even the Foss 54 barge. The boat's stern is holding well, and a view of the expansive aft deck wraps things up. I was pretty skeptical of this wreck from the onset, as the sonar surveys have a lot of differences, especially at the bow. However, one key similarity is the main cavity adjacent to a bright return, which is likely the tow post. We also see this elongated structure and shadow, which could be the pulley and boom. 
Crucial identification details came from the virtual museum that gives us a clear match on the tow post. I would have never thought this was a military landing craft, but looking at the bottom left photo, we see the same notches at the fore part of the wreck lining up perfectly. I suspect this vessel has traveled well beyond Lake Union. Super cool to witness military history like this. If you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe as we have 97 other targets to go after in Lake Union. There is plenty of maritime exploration to do within the Puget Sound and beyond, and I hope you'll join me on that journey. Thank you to Coastal Sensing and Survey, DCS Films, Global Underwater Explorers Seattle, the Maritime Documentation Society, the Lake Union Virtual Museum, and the countless individuals who supported the survey and archives I cited throughout this video. I'm sure this was only one of many efforts to preserve Seattle's rich maritime history, and I appreciate your dedication. A big shout out to Blue Robotics and Cerulean Sonar for sponsoring this video. Their low-cost tech is enabling the future of marine robotics. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.